Hey guys, today we'll be looking at the dorms on the South 40. I had the chance to look through most of the dorms on campus, so I'll be talking about how the dorms are similar and how they're different, as well as ranking them at the end and showing the surprise. So let's get right into it. First up is the LK Rose College, also known as Liga Caney. For Caney, the dorms are modern doubles with a shared bathroom. As you can see in the picture, it looks like a typical double, and this is actually where I lived my freshman year, but we didn't have the shelves on the desk like they are in the picture. The bathroom is surprisingly spacious compared to the rest of the dorm. And then another thing to note is that Caney has raised ceilings, at least for the first floor, which makes it seem more spacious. But also that means the room isn't as well lit as other dorms. Um, for Liggett, typically the rooms are suites of four, but I know there are doubles and triples with average space in the common room and a little bit below average space in each suite. Here's the picture. And then additionally, there's only one bathroom per suite. I personally don't mind this because Liggett is placed in one of the best locations on campus because it's right next to BD and the mail room and close to campus, and it's also pretty new. So even though everything else is pretty average, I think it's decent. Rankings wise, I'd give Koenig a 7 out of 10 in space, an 8 out of 10 in cleanliness, and a 10 out of 10 in location. So that puts it at an overall of 8.3 out of 10. For Liggett, I'd give it a 6 out of 10 for space, an 8 out of 10 for cleanliness, 10 out of 10 for location, for an overall of 8 out of 10. Next up, we have Umrath and Sofaho, also known as South 40 House. For Umrath, these are some of the newest dorms on the 40, with very modern doubles and lots of people on each floor. As shown in the picture, the ceiling is average and the space is comparable to Koenig. The closets, however, have sliding doors and a mirror, which is a nice bonus, whereas Koenig closets are just wooden doors that open up. Um, the bathroom is average, with it being on par, if not a little bigger than the Koenig bathrooms. Here's what it looks like. Now into Sofa Ho, which sits on top of BD. One thing to note about this dorm is that the floor plan varies a lot. Like there isn't a specific floor plan for each room, so I just found the most common one. As you can see, it's a very similar layout to the Liggett dorms but they definitely do feel more spacious and have nice raised ceilings. The bedrooms are basically average, so nothing too out of the ordinary, but definitely a solid building to be in. Ranking wise, I give Amrath an 8 out of 10 for space, a 9 out of 10 for cleanliness, and a 9 out of 10 for location, giving it an average of 8.6 out of 10. For Sofoho, I give it an 8 out of 10 for space, a 9 out of 10 for cleanliness, and a 10 out of 10 for location, giving an average of 9 out of 10. Next on the list is Brookings Res College, which is basically just Lean and Greg. So for Lean, it sits on top of WPG and Ursa's, and just reminds me of Koenig like space-wise. The nice part about this dorm is that it has large windows. So bathrooms are just standard, nothing big like Koenig or Amrath. Overall, I feel like this is just a very average dorm, not too sure what to say about this. It is in a good location though compared to some of the other ones. Um, Greg on the other hand is also in one of the prime locations and it has one of the shortest walks to campus. The suite is pretty average and on par with other locations shown later such as Shepley. Either way, both dorms are clean and simple, so just really solid dorms. Ranking wise, I give Lean a 6 out of 10 for space. 8 out of 10 for cleanliness, and 9 out of 10 for location, giving an overall of 7.6 out of 10. For Greg, I give it an 8 out of 10 for space, an 8 out of 10 for cleanliness, and 10 out of 10 for location, giving an average of 8.6 out of 10. Next up, Women Crow, aka Dardic and Nemirov. These are very similar to all the other ones, except for it's just a little more dirty. Uh, not necessarily dirty, just a little more musty, in my opinion. Dardic is a bit far, but not too bad because it is next to the parking lot and the street. Um, decent sized bathrooms and rooms. The thing I don't like about Dardic is that the carpet is kind of an ugly color as shown here. Overall, it's pretty average. 
Nimrov is also pretty average and comparable to Greg, but in a worse location and more of a musty feel. I promise there are more interesting ones coming up, so let's move on. Rankings wise, I'd give Dardic a 6 out of 10 for space, a 7 out of 10 for cleanliness, and a 6 out of 10 for location, giving it an overall of 6.3 out of 10. For Nemrov, I'd give it an 8 out of 10 for space, a 7 out of 10 for cleanliness, and a 7 out of 10 for location, giving it an overall of 7.3 out of 10. Next up is Lebo. Uh, I really feel bad for you if you got stuck in one of these, because not only are they old and outdated, there were, were quite a few cockroach issues throughout the year. And of course, the common rooms for B are nice, and the floor is bonded because there aren't many other places to hang, but it doesn't really make up for the room. This res college is one of the only ones with like bathrooms that are shared by floors. And if I remember correctly, both are basically the same. Doubles, well, singles this year, with Lee having a nice common room, computer, lab, and a basement. And I can say with confidence, this is probably the dirtiest dorm in the 40, and pretty much all of WashU. And I believe that WashU will probably remodel or tear these down in the next five years, but don't quote me on that. Rankings wise, I'd give Lee a 5 out of 10 for space, a 1 out of 10 for cleanliness, and a 5 out of 10 for location, giving an average of 3.6 out of 10. Um, for Bo, I'd give it a 4 out of 10 for space, a 1 out of 10 for cleanliness, and a 4 out of 10 for location, giving an average of 3 out of 10. Next is JKL, or also known as Shenling, Dotton, and Rutledge. Definitely needs a renaming, but also a remodeling. I'm also going to be reviewing Cake or Heitzman, Hurd, and Myers because all of these dorms have the same layout and floor plan. The only difference is some of them have a urinal in the suites, whereas some just have the toilet. Additionally, neither of these are prime locations, but JKL has the edge of being close to the street, while Hake has the edge of being next to or on top of the mailroom. And all of these are mostly six person suites that are traditional, but there are some eight person ones. And they're mostly two singles and two doubles. The building themselves are old and have had cockroaches, but nothing as bad as Lebo. The space isn't too bad when you get used to it, and you get a balcony, but if I remember correctly, I don't think freshmen can open the door. But overall, not too bad if you have five friends you want to live with. But traditional ones tend to be a bit dirtier. For rankings, I'm gonna give JKL 6 out of 10 for space, 3 out of 10 for cleanliness, and 6 out of 10 for location, giving an average of 5 out of 10. And for Haig, I'm gonna give it a 6 out of 10 for space, a 3 out of 10 for cleanliness, and again a 6 out of 10 for location, giving it another average of 5 out of 10. Next up is Wiggy also known as Danforth, Shepley, and Wheeler. For Danforth, my experience was okay, but I remember being able to hear the people above you move, but that could be because of the ceilings, which are lower, and I could be used to raised ceilings. The ceilings are not as tall as Koenig or Lean. Um, one more nitpick that stood out was in the bathroom. The space was smaller than average, and there were hooks for towels instead of rods, which is kind of dirty, especially if you have sweet mates that are hanging their towels and they're touching yours. Um, location is also not the worst, but far from ideal. Shepley and Wheeler are literally identical, so this will be quick. Space and room layout is basically the same as Greg. Nothing too special, so yeah. Rankings wise, I'd give Danforth a 6 out of 10 for space, an 8 out of 10 for cleanliness, and a 5 out of 10 for location, giving an average of 6.3 out of 10. For Shepley and Wheeler, I'd give it an 8 out of 10 for space, an 8 out of 10 for cleanliness, and a 4 out of 10 for location, giving an average of 6.6 .6 out of 10. Next one is Elliot. Kind of weird because they are the same as college, but they could not be more different. Um, Elliot A is a bunch of singles with some doubles. The thing I liked about the singles were that they were four per suite and each suite had two bathrooms. 
Um, the rooms were like sophomore singles, but there wasn't really a common room, kind of like park, which comes up later. Uh, cleanliness is all right, but closer to the traditional dorm musty feel-ish thing. Another thing to note is they had bad flooding. So right now the whole dorm is actually under maintenance. And Elliot B, on the other hand, is just so new and so clean. It has the same layout as Greg in the South 40, has raised ceilings, very clean, the rooms are decently sized, the common room is spacious, you know, just, just another solid dorm in a good location. Rankings wise, for Elliot A, I'd give it a 6 out of 10 for space, a 5 out of 10 for cleanliness, and an 8 out of 10 for location, giving it a 6.3 out of 10. For Elliot B, I'd give it an 8 out of 10 for space, a 9 out of 10 for cleanliness, and a 9 out of 10 for location, giving it an average of 8.6 out of 10. Finally, last but not least, we have Park Mud, the one I feel like is the most overhyped on the list. Starting off with Park, we typically have the 6 person suites, with three doubles and two bathrooms. Each bedroom feels pretty spacious, but the ceilings aren't raised like in Koenig or Lean. There isn't really a common room, but more like a shelf to put fridges or microwaves on, like in Elliot A. Mud, on the other hand, has about the same feel, but with four singles and a very large common room. Everyone always talks about how spacious it is, and yes, it is spacious, but there are some drawbacks. Some things I've noticed, some of the sinks, are slightly lower than normal, so for tall people, that's an issue. And in mud, I've seen a few cockroaches running around, but nothing as bad as Lebo. Overall, not bad, but also factoring location, there are definitely better dorms. Rankings wise, I give Park a 7 out of 10 for space, a 7 out of 10 for cleanliness, and a 5 out of 10 for location, giving an average of 6.3. For mud, I give it a 9 out of 10 for space, a 6 out of 10 for cleanliness, and 6 out of 10 for location, giving an average of 7 out of 10. Anyways, here's the bonus I was talking about. While I was going through all the dorms, here are some exotic dorms that I found for you guys. Most of these are a lot larger than normal. Since all the rooms will be converted into singles, there will be some lucky people that get these. The first one we have is this bow double. This is just very spacious. And the next one we have is this Nemrov suite. This is just one of the largest common rooms I've ever seen. So the third one we have is this Canyon Triple. Canyon Triples aren't very common in general. And this Canyon Triple is just larger than literally any other room in Koenig. And coming in fourth, we have this Omrath Triple. I think there's like, I think one on each floor, and these are just insane in size. And if there's just one person living in these, they're gonna have a lot of room. Anyways, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching, and let me know what you think of my list. And if you want a tour of the village dorms, like and share this video so I know. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.